happening? What's happening? What's happening? This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, Chris Monroe, and you're now tuned in live to a Wednesday night edition of the Chris Monroe Show. We got a nice show lined up for you tonight. You know, we usually do Monday nights because it's Monday Night Raw radio style, but we had to go ahead and drop in an extra one for you for Irritated Genies coming in. What's up, family? Go ahead and put your name in and where you're from. We'll give you a quick shout out before we get into the content of the show. Tianka Monet, what's happening? Peak Monkey Coupons. Miss Tony, I see you. Thanks for the heart over here on Periscope. We got the Facebook Live going. We got the Periscope going. And I don't know, something going on with my YouTube. I think they, bu they banned me or something. I don't know. Think Fresh Wellness over here on Periscope. Good to see you. Leo out of Dallas, Texas. I see you, bro. I see you. I see you. Woke, but voted for Hillary Clinton looking at. Nah, I ain't vote for no Hillary, man. You know I ain't do that. Come on now. Really? Do I look like I'm going to vote for Hillary? Straight face. Dr. Coleman out of GA. I see you. Tony out of Milwaukee, New Jersey in the building. Brown Chicky. I see you over here on Periscope. Let's see what else we got here. I can't see these other comments for some reason. Uh-oh. Let me turn that down. All right. Who we got over here on Facebook Live? I see the family over here. Yeah, they messing with my stream over on uh on the other one. What's up, Liz? Mr. I Stay Woke. That's me. How you know? Liz Abitty over on Facebook Live today. Montreal, I see you. Peace, peace. Out of Texas as well. So like I said, we got a good show lined up for you tonight. But uh, I see they've been doing some stuff with the technology here. They trying to knock me off for some reason. Hopefully it comes back on. The uh, YouTube was on. But you can't get them all, I guess, right? But what we got lined up for you tonight, it's a special Wednesday edition, like I said. Plus, we'll be joined by the Irritated Genie in just a few minutes here. Uh, we're going to be talking about Pizzagate. I don't know if you're familiar with what's going on with that. He's going to break that down for you for those who don't know. Going to look at the hip-hop and the homosexuality in the black community, how that's been affecting us and how we can try to combat some of this craziness. You know they dropping stuff on us all the time, all in your food, all in your water. Everywhere you look, something happening to you, but we're going to fight back. That don't mean give up. If something coming at you, you fight back anyway. We're going to chop it up with that. Cool the Savage. I remember you. I almost blocked you last time because you was promoting in my Periscope. Don't do it this time unless you want to go. Pew. I see you, though. Thanks for joining us tonight. And this is a call-in show as well. You can call in at 516-418-5565. That's the phone number. 516-418-5565. And I don't know how this happened here, but we're going to fix it. Ploop. Now we got that right. I had too many ends in there. But you got to be quick with the technology. Thanks for those hearts. And if you can, share this out to your Twitter. Share it out to your Facebook and invite your followers. That will be greatly appreciated. Tyrone Westside. What? You from the west side? The best side. But I am here in St. Louis. And like I say, we're going to get the uh, irritated genie on in just a few moments here. And uh, I just wanted to let y'all know what was going on. I'm going to go ahead and get connected with him. I'm going to take this quick brief time out and be right back with the Irritated Genie in just a few minutes. This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, Chris Monroe, and I know you're ready for summertime because I've been ready, but this is what you can do, baby girl. Rock this dashiki shirt or a dashiki skirt. Show those legs. Let them know that you ain't playing, baby. Black girl magic. Rock it just like this or put some stretch pants on. Do it the way you do it. You know how we do it. Go ahead and get yours at chrismonroestl.com. Sizes small through extra large are available and get free shipping at Chris Monroe. STL.com. Soap School is more than just soap. It's a way of life. After completing this process, you'll learn how to make cold process, hot process, 
Melt and pour your own soap. Start your own home-based business. Make an additional income. Learn more at LiveSoapSchool.com. Sign up today. Enroll for this great course and learn from an expert. LiveSoapSchool.com is the place to go. Make money and have fun. It's too easy. Now, once you get to the site, make sure you select Enroll in Live Soap School. That's LiveSoapSchool.com. Are you seeking an affordable way to promote your business, product, service, nonprofit organization, or even an event? Visit ChrisMonroeSTL.com. There are several options available for advertising opportunities. Find out advertising rates at ChrisMonroeSTL.com. Promote within the website itself. Promote on our YouTube videos. Promote everywhere within our network. Be heard. Be found. Increase sales. ChrisMonroeSTL.com is the place to find out more. Several options are available that will go with any budget. ChrisMonroeSTL.com. I'm not sure if anybody told you, but you need to become a member of the I Stay Woke Click. Join at ChrisMonroeSTL.com. Get a free membership or a premium membership. Goodies and more. ChrisMonroeSTL.com. This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, and we got some brand new products in that you're gonna like. Check out this red, black, and green beaded necklace all the way around. RBG colors in style. Put it around your neck and show them your pan African spirit. What about this tonk in black background with the fire? Ooh, makes you feel good. Or the classic antique tonk style. Get all that and more, plus get free shipping at ChrisMonroeSTL.com. That's ChrisMonroeSTL.com. This is the student master teacher, Mr. I Stay Woke, reminding you about the Chris Monroe Show each and every Monday night, 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 o'clock Central, where we chop it up about current events, news, politics, entrepreneurship, and a whole lot more. But guess what? We're trying to expand this show. That's right. You want to make it at least five days a week, maybe even more, and you can help. You can help by going to GoFundMe.com forward slash I Stay Woke. Help us out with our GoFundMe campaign. Just launched it, and we need your support. Go ahead and give $5, $10, $20, even more. Give what you can, and if not, go ahead and share it out to your Twitter and Facebook. It's much greatly appreciated. All you got to do is go to GoFundMe.com forward slash I Stay Woke. Do what you do. Be who you be. And you know what else? I'm going to see you before you see me. Hey, do you know where I can find those RBG banners? Yeah, man. Just go down to iShopWoke.com. That's the new website with RBG gear, jewelry, accessories, and a whole lot more. Well, what do you got there? Like pillows and stuff like I see all the time? Yeah, the pillows. You can get them in multiple colors. You can make all types of stuff. Customized orders and wholesale orders are welcome. Just go to iShopWoke.com to order. iShopWoke.com is the new website. Check it out today. Get free shipping. Don't forget iShopWoke.com. <laughs> What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? We're back live with the Chris Monroe Show. You got an opinion? You want to voice your opinion? All you got to do now. Dial that number, 516-418-5565. You heard me? 516 418 And we are back here live on the Chris Monroe Show where we chop it up about the news, politics, current events, and so much more. We are now joined by a special guest, the Irritated Genie. What's happening, family? Fantastic. How you doing, brother? Honor to be on your program. Oh, thank you, thank you. We, we are glad to have you on the program. For people who do not know, could you give people a little bit of background of who you are and what you do? Yes, sir. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Irritated Genie of Southeast. I'm from Washington, D.C. Uh, I'm an African community activist, African nationalist, uh, one of the two premier world experts on the assault of homophilia on the black world community. Uh, that would be myself and 
and Dr. Wally Mubaruti, the two experts in this particular field. Uh, basically, what we do is try to educate our people so they can have a proper understanding of the danger of pedophilia and homosexuality and how that's actively leading us to genocide and how at this particular moment in time, it is the number one threat to African survival in the 21st century. Wow. So it's the number one threat. Bet worse than the police shooting us down, worse than anything we can come up with. That's the number one attack. That's what you're saying? I'll say it like this. Let's use the police for an example. As a black man, I'm sure there's every black man that's listening, we would agree. There's nothing more angry and infuriating than what the police do to us on a regular basis when they pull us over and try to push us to the point of making us respond in a way that they can justify murdering us or when they murder our people in the street. However, if we take away the emotion from it and we actually wait, here's the question. Are more black men, women, and children being violated and brutalized and murdered by police each day? Or are more black children and people being sexually abused and turned into sexual uh, savagery every day? Mm. It's not even comparable because the one little black girl who's five years old whose stepfather is molesting her every day from five years old to 15, it happened every day of her life uh, until she's 15 years old. How can we compare the brother that we love so much? We're not, we're not minimizing the issue of police brutality and, and murder and, and, and demonism. But how are we going to compare that one incident to this little girl and he's molesting other little girls and all the children in our community getting devastated? Like, can we even begin to try to compare that? Yeah, you got a good point there. I mean, it has been a, a non-stop attack, even though some of us don't even realize that we are under attack. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I mean, we, we can look at all the different issues, and as we talk about it more, and I can get more to explain to why it's the number one assault. It's not that it's the only thing that is a problem. It's just that if, as any father or mother would understand, or should understand in our right minds, if we fail to protect our children from sexual abuse, leading them into a, a death style where they want to be with a member of the same gender sexually, mm. then that ends the continuity of our race for us to even talk about a future and fixing the issue that we confronted with. Exactly. Yeah, I heard something before where you were talking about uh, it's a checkmate or something like that. What was that you were saying about this is the actual end of, uh, you know, when they do this homosexuality and put it on us, this is the very end of black civilization or our black people as we know it. Yes. See, when we look at black people, we, we tend to think physical numbers and the physical people. We don't think about what really constitutes our existence. If what made us black was just our skin color, then you could take black paint and put it on a European and they would be an African all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. But that's not a reality. What makes us African is not just our skin color. It's our culture. It's our rhythm. It's our spirit. It's our, it's, our, it's our mind, it's the way we think, it's the way we act, it's the way we treat one another, it's the foods that we make. It's, it's everything about us uh, and the total consummation of who we are as a race of people. When you consider that, and you consider, well, when you drill down and say, what fundamentally separates African people from any other race on the planet that, that, that is central to our existence? We're the only race who, if you trace us back thousands of years, as early as you can find black people, Mm -hmm. have always believed and taught and lived by the creed that there was a balance between the black man and the black woman. We saw the world that the black man and black woman were, were put here to be complementary journey, uh, partners in the journey of life. And so that is what really explains and really is the centerpiece of what makes our race. When we have mothers who we love beyond anything, you do something to our mother, we're going to crack your head. Mm -hmm. We have mothers we love. We have aunties that love their nephews, mothers that love their sons, husbands that love their wives, wives that do everything for our husbands, even in our ancient ancestral story. It was a balanced story about the man and the woman and what the black man and woman can produce together. Exactly. When, when you take that out of us being African, you have removed and killed the African. In other words, mm -hmm. where there's no respect for black women, there is no African. It doesn't matter how many dark-skinned people are there. There's no African. The culture is dead, the personality is dead, the whole archetype of who we are and that we've existed for, for millions of years is gone. Wow. So, go ahead. Wow, wow, I understand. That makes perfect sense. And uh, so are you one of the people that say the black woman is God? Do you believe in that doctrine which, that you hear going around here? 
I say that our ancestors, I'm going to say it like our ancestors said, the black man is God, the black woman is godless. And they both have equal footing. It just depends on what you're doing. If we're going out here and you about to have a, a, a child, our ancestors said, brother, you better pay to the goddess, at her root, the, the great mother, because you want to make sure that your wife has a healthy birth. You want that child to be born healthy. Mm -hmm. But now, if we out here dealing with the police, if we out here dealing with white supremacy, if we going out to battle, even dealing with this Negro madness in our community, pedophiles or whoever's in our community, then you're going to call on Amity because you need that black male warrior spirit and say, Amity, give me what I need to get the, the tools right so I can go split this head and, and create balance in my community. So I would say that the black woman is goddess, the black man is God, and together when we emulate the best that we are, we are representatives of the God and goddess. That makes sense. That makes sense. Because, you know, everybody wants to lean one way or the other. The woman is in charge or it's the black man fault. They always, you know, everybody ready to point the finger. And it seems like it's just another reason or another way to divide us, divide and conquer us, basically, is what they've been doing. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think <coughs> in that argument, I think part of it is lost. And, uh, and I'm talking about myself with this as well. When we put out these ideas, which, again, we believe them because our ancestors taught them. But there's a responsibility that goes with it. Like, for instance, I can't say the black woman is goddess and the black man is God and then not take responsibility to try to live to some type of standard. Mm -hmm. I have to represent myself with some type of standard. I can't just watch my people being destroyed and harmed and not do anything about it and then say we gods and goddesses. There's responsibility that comes with that information. So if I'm saying that the black man is God and the black woman is goddess, you should be able to look at my walk and see some kind of indication that I'm living according to really believing that we can do anything that we want to do. And we can create light and we can create a reality for ourselves. Most definitely. So we definitely have to take responsibility, personal responsibility to make some things happen for ourselves. So what do you say to people that are uh, that are still upset or sad that Hillary Clinton lost the election a couple months ago? And, you know, you know, I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, <laughs> April, April 15, 2017, we're going to be doing a lecture called Pizzagate, the new slave trade. What people don't realize, don't misunderstand me, I'm no fan of Donald Trump per se. But the worst thing, really the nail in the coffin for our people in this country, that the real nail in the coffin would have been Hillary Clinton winning that election. That's true. Hillary Clinton has got to be one of the most evil females in the history of the world. And I'm going to expose this madness and this insanity that she's involved in. Just to give an example for people to understand how evil the Clintons are and Hillary Clinton. The Clintons have done their best job to absolutely devastate the country of Haiti. The economic robbery that they have done in Haiti, remember when, that, when the so-called earthquake happened in Haiti, it was Barack Obama who appointed the butcher of New Orleans, uh, George Bush, uh, Junior and Bill Clinton <clears throat> to get the money and govern what was happening in Haiti. And what did they do? They ensured that food couldn't get to the people that needed it. They took billions of dollars that was given to people around the world to help Haiti and put it in their pockets and gave all kind of contracts to their friends uh, and family to, to exploit Haitian brothers and sisters. They sat by a while a uh, homophile rate of black children, boys and girls, is rampant in the country of Haiti. And if we remember, a white female named Laura Silsby was caught, along with some others with her foundation, of kidnapping 33 black Haitian children and trying to smuggle them into America through the Dominican Republic. When the Haitian authorities <clears throat> caught her and found that she didn't um, have authorization to do it, they sent her back. She actually had the audacity to go back and try to get back across, and this time they arrested her. Mm. Arrested her for kidnapping children. And guess who? Now, this is a white female. Guess who goes and tries to get her out and got her out of Haiti from being arrested and locked up for kidnapping of black children? Who was that? Hillary, Hillary Rodham Clinton. Wow. Now, what we have to deal with is, and I'm going to bring it down, like this is not speculation. We now, through WikiLeaks, we have the proof and the evidence. We now know what they intended to do with these black children. The stuff that is going on now in this world is more severe 
and more threatening and to some degree <clears throat> more frightening than the Atlanta slave trade. Wow. We're not talking about kidnapping black people to do work for you, even though we know the atrocities that went through. I'm not minimizing what our ancestors went through whatsoever. What I am saying is there are two primary illegal businesses in the world right now, the two most profitable illegal businesses. The first one is sex trafficking, and that's mostly in children. And the second one is organ trafficking. And what is happening right now as we speak, because they have an international system of kidnapping children and smuggling them through the entire system, and they also have an international organized uh, 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 um, organizational uh, units that take the bodies of dead people and smuggle those body parts and the most desired body parts of those are young black males and young black females. These two businesses have now merged. Mm. And as African people, if we don't understand the kind of crisis situation is made, because what this means is the most desired body parts on the planet are black organs. The most desired resources on the continent, I mean in the world, are in the African continent. The most Militarily unprepared race of people on the planet to defend our interests are the black community. Mm. What that means is if we do not get ourselves together absolutely quickly, get our minds corrected, and stand up and firm against sexual abuse of the black community and this homophile assault, we're going to be on the menu, brother. Wow, we're next on the menu. We are on live with the irritated genie dropping those knowledge bombs. Now, you're being accused of being a Trump supporter on Periscope. I guess that's what they're saying. Just because you said anything negative about Hillary Clinton, now I guess people feel like uh, you love Trump for some reason. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, see, one of the things our people are is, 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 is that we, we, we fail to have our own personality. So we, we don't have the type of intelligence where we can say as an African... I don't have to pick between any Europeans. I'm not supposed to be looking for European friends. See, that's a lost African that thinks when two Europeans are put in front of them, they got to figure out which one is their friend. <clears throat> I'm an African. I'm my own friend. You're my brother. You're my friend. I'm your friend. We're supposed to be looking out for each other. And what's happened is our people have been so dumbed down and our self-esteem has been taken away from us so much, we don't realize it is insanity for an African to be looking for a white friend anyway. Mm. I any of these Europeans, I haven't said there's a good European in the history of the world. I've never said that. All I said was, at least we don't know how bad Trump is. We know how bad Hillary Clinton is. We know her record in terms of her husband and incarcerating more black men in this country than any president before his time. We know the record they've done in exploiting and dominating and creating absolute havoc and destroying Haiti to the best of their ability. We know the savagery when they supported uh, the destruction and the murder of Gaddafi, which led to the, the murder of the uh, uh, Africans living in um, Libya. The Africans who were living. I'm not talking about the, the, the Arabs or even Gaddafi. I'm talking about the Africans who, the original inhabitants of Libya, who had their own community. The Arabs that were supported by the Obama administration under the guidance of Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State, have slaughtered and committed genocide against our African brothers and sisters there and then gone and invaded Chad. So we know the kind of demonism. We know the lesbian and feminist anti-male uh, 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 objective of Hillary Rodham Clinton. So it is insanity for anybody listening to this who is obviously ignorant or either hates black people to have anything to say about someone saying we should be glad that Hillary Clinton is not in office. Wow. And I mean, there's still a lot of people saying I'm with her. And, you know, Hillary Clinton's uh, thinking about running for mayor of New York City. She just won't go away. I don't know what's up with that, but uh, I think she just needs to throw in a towel and call it quits. But uh, this uh, this this political thing, it's like we're babies when it comes to politics. We just don't understand how deep this stuff goes. And we want to trust these people. Like people are still looking for Bernie Sanders. People still even think Barack Obama had our back. Uh, what do you feel like the legacy of Barack Obama uh, with his presidency ended now? Um, and this is the problem. My people uh, perish for a lack of knowledge, you know, brother. If we look back during the Roman times, when the Romans decided they wanted to go in and really do a full incursion through North Africa and pierce and destroy the empires of North Africa completely and holistically, 
They said the blacks in North Africa will resist. So we want to lay their arms down. We want to lay their guard down. So they took a mulatto, Lucius Septimius Severus, who had uh, one black parent, one uh, uh, European parent, and our people got so excited in North Africa, we let our guard down. He was one of the most vicious slaughterers of North Africa. Mm -hmm. In the same situation here, the number one golden objective of the globalists or the small hat elite uh, that had ruled this planet was to, for, for Barack Obama, in terms of the black community, their number one objective was to get us to lay down our arms and our fight against homosexuality. They want to destroy African culture and the black family holistically and completely, which the Bushes and the Reagan administration started with the crack cocaine. <clears throat> but they want to finish the full process. They want to remove any idea of construct that a black man should be with a black woman. Mm -hmm. So they want to create an environment where these are the different options a black man should consider. He should either be with a white female, an Asian female, a Hispanic female, or another male, or with a child. They do not want a black man with a black woman. They do not want a black woman with a black man. But in order for us to accept the insanity, which is homophilia, homosexuality, pedophilia, and all of the sick, degenerate sexual madness that we see through Lee Daniels and Empire and Scandal and all of this freakishness, they needed to put someone that looked similar to us, not quite black. We're still not smart enough to know that what comes to a European womb is not going to be good for our people. But they put something that looked black in front of us, Barack Obama. And the only thing he did when he got him out is to tell African people that we should be sodomites and should sodomize our sons and daughters. And that the North Africa should be invaded and destroyed. And that the African continent, everybody on the African continent, he even used sanctions against the countries uh, and threatened to take away um, their, their, their aid. 280,000 right. here, 250,000 in Zambia. Uh, all throughout the African continent if they wouldn't accept homosexuality and make it legal. Mm -hmm. To the point where the African nation said when he made his last trip there in Kenya, they said, listen, sodomy is not changed that we believe it. And they said, listen, you can come here if you want, but don't come here you come here and talk about helping us with our food supply, clean water, and infrastructure development. We don't really know more about your homosexual madness. <clears throat> so this is the only thing that this guy did of relevance to black people since he's been in office. It's taken us from a point we were already sinking the ship in terms of black self-respect and family. Our family structure had already been sinking by the time he came in. He's completely removed any level of sanity from the black world community and the reality of it, particularly in America, you cannot even get a black woman to agree that a pedophile is wrong with it. Wow. And that pedophiles are bad anymore. And somebody over here is asking in the comments, so you saying you don't like gay people? I don't like homosexuality at all. It is sick, it is perverse, it is un-African. In fact, it's the total opposite of everything that is African. Wow, and that's straight up, right out the horse's mouth. You don't have to wonder now. He told you it's anti-African and we don't want it. We are joined live right here with... The Irritated Genie, dropping those knowledge bombs on you. If you want to call in, the number is 516-418-5565. That's 516-418-5565. I see we got several people in there. Make sure you press the one and we'll bring you in. And ask your brief question. Nothing silly either. Don't come with no craziness. And uh, I wanted to also ask you about, the, when you said the police earlier on here, is that something that black people can do here in America when it comes to the police to make it better or to make it so that we're not being slaughtered wholesale without any justice at all? It is. And it's going to sound like I'm giving an answer that's... I'm giving you a military general answer. In other words, as a black man, I have as much venom in my heart for the police for what they do to black people as any black person. So the answer I'm going to give is not a direct answer. It's not going to sound like it goes directly at the issue because I'm not looking at it as one issue. I'm looking at it from a broader perspective of a whole war that we're facing for our survival. This is what we need to do. We need to identify the fact that this homophile assault is right in the center of destroying our race. Mm -hmm. We need to collectively organize as black men with the support of black women, but we gotta take the front on this, and we have to make the decision to eliminate homophiles from our community. Meaning we don't want no pedophiles in our community and in our sacred spaces, in our school, spaces where our children are, in our homes, 
in our family, we don't want no homosexuals there either. Y'all got to be somewhere else. You can't be here. And the pedophiles got to go. We understand what I mean when I say that. <laughs> Once we organize as men to levy that blow to that group, we will then be organized in such a way that we can say, well, look, really? We so organized now, we can defend our own community, which means we don't really need anybody coming in here in the middle of the night having an issue with somebody jaywalking across the street. We'll take care of that. If we call you because somebody has a heart attack or something like that, then you can come in. But if we don't call you, we don't really need to see you. And if we do see you, you will need to be acting right. Because if you're not, then we're going to be able to tighten you up and make sure you know how you're supposed to act when you're in our community. But the reality is, if you can't stop people from sodomizing your sons and daughters, you can't fight with the police. I'm not, I'm not saying that because I don't want to deal with the police, but the reality of it is, it's ridiculous to think that we're not going to be, that, that we're not strong enough to take a definitive position that the black man should be with the black woman, and we don't want to see no brothers around us or sisters around us interracially dating or any of this pedophile or homosexual. So we can't take that basic stance, but yet we're going to go against the most best trained military uh, uh, ground force in America. That's not realistic. That makes 100% sense. I mean, if we can't get the basics right, we can't get basic training together, how are we going to go in against these people that's just train killers? That don't make sense right there. So, yeah, that makes... We got you there. So, uh, let me see here. I'm going to take one of these phone calls here from this 917 area code. You're on the Chris Monroe Show with Irritated Jenny. What's your question? Hello? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh oh. Uh, I just had a uh, peace family. I just had a quick uh, message for um, all the black people on the call. Um, I just wanted to tell everybody um, to get armed, like get a permit, license, apply in every state that you can. Um, most states you don't have to live in the state. You know, look up and, and find the, the states that is open carry, that you don't have to have a license. Learn how to shoot. Go to the range. Get your children involved in shooting by age six. Get your children involved in guns, gun knowledge. Have one in the home. At least know how to use a handgun, reload, <coughs> and all of that good stuff. Cool, cool. All right. Thanks for your comment, bro. All right, uh, irritated genius. Would you agree with what he's saying there about we need to be armed to the teeth, ready to go if things shall uh, not go the way we want it to go? I'm gonna say I uh, uh, rather stand that 150 percent. The reality of it is things are already not going the way we want them to go. Right. Obviously, at this point in time, particularly for a black man, because when we're talking about being armed, I think it's everybody's responsibility, but most specifically, for a black man in this environment, in this country, who is in a place where he has access, economic wherewithal to get one, and the discipline to know how to clean it and keep it safe, and a family that he can trust it around, to not have arms in his house, at least one weapon to protect him and his family is irresponsible at this point. That's right. This is a very serious converging crisis that we're facing. It's the most dangerous time in the history of this country for African people. And it's, it's inexcusable for us to not be prepared. Nat Turner, if he had the access to arms and the capacity to get them that we have today, he would have won that war hands down and we'd have been free then. But he didn't have it. So our ancestors had an excuse. We don't. So what do you say about to the people who are these convicted felons that feel like, well, I got this record, I can't get guns, I can't do any of that. What would you uh, say to somebody like that? I would say they do have to be careful. Because here, here, here's where the, it gets real tricky. On the one hand, I don't want any black man who needs to be armed to not be armed. There's a second piece of it, though. It's a very tricky situation. Because the enemy is looking for any excuse to take strong black men and many of the brothers that come out of prison get themselves together. They physically and mentally strong black men. And we need those brothers out here. You don't want to get caught with that weapon because they're going to put you in and throw away the key. So it's like one of those situations where I would say a brother that, that has a convicted felon and knows that if he gets caught with a weapon is going to end up doing serious time because we're in a situation where we've been so disrespectful to our women 
that they resent us so much that even your woman can call up and say you got a gun against you. know, if she gets mad at you or something, I'm going to say a brother would have to really think, is his situation appropriate for him to be armed knowing that he doesn't have the legal right to carry? He got to really think through that and make a good decision on that on his own. Right, right. That makes total sense. What about what the brother said about teaching the kids, teaching them when they as little as six years old? Is that something uh, that you think is a, a good method to do as well? I think it's absolutely mandatory. I think, you know, one thing I, I appreciate about uh, the, the islands in the Caribbean, because, I mean, it's changing now, but it's to some degree, particularly the healthy roots reggae music, it's all talking about something positive. So when they party, they have mama, grandmother, the children and the grandchildren in the same place party because it's, a, it's kind of a holistic environment. The men that's interested in women, they dance, but the children dance, everybody can be there. I think we should take that kind of model <clears throat> as it relates to home self-defense, as it relates to black community defense. Our children have not learned to be cowards yet. That's one thing I learned from my children. Like my children, the stuff I teach them, sometimes, I'm not gonna lie, brother, they, they force me to do things that I might not like I told my children that these are these, these, these whites are, are enemies, so you gotta be cautious. They call them white devils. They don't know any other word for white than white devils. Mm. We go out and eat. One time a white male came and hit me on the time of the shoulder and spoke to me, and I said, you know, how you doing? And my daughter's face was balled up until we got in the car. And I'm trying to ask what's wrong. She said, Daddy, I didn't like the fact you spoke to that white devil. So I realized it's not acceptable for me to just teach her that. So from this point forward, from that day forward, every time some European comes, I don't know, and they want to make themselves feel comfortable speaking to me, I just look at them. And now she smiles now. My daughter just smiles. She said, yeah, my daddy is real. He don't, he don't, you know, he got skin and grinning for them. My point is, we're the ones that teach our children to be cowards. I've learned that we got to teach them to be brave, but you, you, they don't know how to be cowards. If you teach them to be brave, they'll do that. If we teach them to be responsible with weapons, then they won't be afraid and intimidated by weapons. They'll know how to use them and know what the appropriate use is. And a child can save an adult's life uh, at a time that's necessary. So I think all of us have that responsibility. And I love the idea, yes. All right, cool, cool. That's, that sounds good. We want to teach them young so they can grow up and pass it on to the next generation. We are on live on the Chris Monroe Show here with the Irritated Genie. And someone uh, said, do you think all white people are devils? I would say it like this. First of all, the answer is yes. But but let me explain what I mean when I say that. Because sometimes people misunderstand that. They think that that means that every white every day is doing something bad. Or that every white, that no white ever does something good for a black person. That's not what it means. What it means is, if you go into the wilderness, and you go to the pack of lions, and you ask them, hey, are there any good hyenas? He'll look at you like you don't lost your African mind. He said, you stinking dogs? Of course it's not. That's a dead one. And even that dead one lived at one point, so he ain't no good either. See, we don't look at the world from an intelligent perspective. The intelligent way to look at the world, like a thinking man, is what is our relationship with this group? Not my individual assessment of an individual who I'm not around 24 hours a day. We have a 6,000-year record of our relationship. Has the relationship been a good one or a bad one? It's been an absolutely horrendous one every step of the way. And they have done everything they can do to calculate our demise along the way. So but to us to throw away 6,000 years of documented history, of videotape footage right now of the last year, over 2016, of how many black people you can see getting murdered and shot to death by racist whites that are still killing us today the way they did 6,000 years ago. The fact that we don't know the answer to what the relationship between the black race and the white race is means that we're intellectually sick and we need a healing. And so my answer when they say are all whites the devil, what I'm saying is these are our enemies. And whatever classification we want to use to describe them, as long as it identifies them as the adversary and someone that's trying to do harm to us and not good, that's what it needs to be. Right, okay, so that makes sense. So would you consider the Arabs to be an enemy as well, or the devils as well? I would say that if you call white crackers, then you got uh, sand crackers in the Arabs. <laughs> I don't even separate it. You got crackers and sand crackers. They're the same group. Say a different flavor, but the same old stuff. Wow. Same ice cream, man. 
<laughs> All right, same old stuff. Cool, cool. So uh, when it comes to this, uh, I know you were saying before earlier that there are different things that are uh, attacking us here in America, probably really in the world. Uh, music and hip-hop, what is it that is, uh, do you feel like there's going to be a change in the near future that's going to change from the stuff we've been hearing, the garbage on the radio, you know, the stuff that's really not teaching anybody anything, the same old stuff. Do you feel like there's going to be any type of change to go back to what it was in the early 90s, maybe, you know, and what it's supposed to be? I would say this. Uh, one, we have a group called African Insurrection Music. If you go on YouTube and pull up African Insurrection Music, and that's African with a K, Insurrection with a uh, K for the C in Insurrection, and then Music, M-U-Z-I-K. We have a whole channel. We have a whole group of artists, and one of the things that they committed to under the label African Insurrection Music is you're not going to get a bunch of profanity. You're not going to get no N-words. You're not going to get no sexual de degenerate messages for black people. This is about us lifting ourselves and fighting as black people. I would say this. I would say if we're going to survive, the reality of it is we have to capture our young people. And the way to capture our young people, one of the ways is through culture. That's just the reality. If we do not change the context of the music, we cannot fix this problem. Because it is through the rhythm and the, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, I got a little bit of a code. It's through the rhythm of the beat that they put the inflections of the ideas that govern our behavior. So if we're listening to music saying, uh, like Public Enemy, fight the power, we're gonna be looking at white power saying we're gonna fight oppression. If we're listening to music calling us bees, hoes, and N-words, really the NWA, which we're still in the NWA period, you know, music generally every 20 years or so, 15 years or so, it goes through shifts and changes, even in the context and the ideas. If you notice, since they got this landmine, we call it NWA. The music industry has not allowed any change in the context of music. It's all about sexual degeneracy, the murder of black people, and horrible behavior being glorified as something positive. And if we look in our community, what we have is drug use and dope use, uh, 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 homosexuality, which is horrible sexual behavior, murder and torture of black people, gang violence, police violence, and murder and torture of black people, forced vaccination, all this stuff. All we have is a reflection of what we're listening to in the music. We have to change the music. I can't say how effective it's going to be, but I can say if we're going to be effective, we have to change you, You are correct. We're going to have to change it and get the message clear on something better than just sagging pants and pants on the ground, you know, the stupid stuff that they've been putting out here. So, Can, um, I, can I say one more thing? Yeah, go ahead. And I want to be clear to people because people think sometimes I'm coming like I'm coming from this high horse. I'm not this ultra-righteous person. I curse more than anybody probably on this line when I'm offline. You'll never hear me use the N-word because I don't hate my own race. I hate other races. But other than that, I do. But if we're going to make music that's going to last and have an impact, we got to get wiser. we got to pull the profanity out. Because when we pull the vulgarity in, which the profanity is basically the vulgarity, I'm not talking about to take the violence against our enemies out. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying take the resistant police brutality. I'm not talking about that. I'm saying the profanity because as an adult, I have a four-year-old son and a, and a five-year-old daughter. I might love the context of some of the music, but I want my children repeating the music they're hearing, and I'm not going to be letting them repeat vulgar language. So what we do is we lose revolutionaries due to the fact that we haven't got wise enough to realize music is not made to be vulgar. Music is made to last and lift the spirits of people and push them in the direction. And that is not the place for your vulgarity. When you out in the street facing police brutality, then you, you know, use whatever language you use. When you fighting the demons in the community, when you talking to a brother on the basketball court, that's one thing. But in our music, we gotta, it can get harder and it can get more aggressive, but it's gotta get cleaner so that we can let everybody hear it. That makes 100% sense there because we have to communicate to the prop to the audience we're not reaching the audience the way we should so uh you know it's time for those rappers singers and whoever producers radio producers you know all of them to step up to the plate and do what's right instead of poisoning our community i'm gonna take this next call the number is 516-418-5565 if you want to call in 516-418-5565 make sure you press the one uh and uh who is this here live on the chris monroe show Malik, what's on your mind? Brother Malik. 
Uh, what's going on, Brother uh, I.O., Brother uh, Chris? Just want to come in. I'll uh, be back here in a minute. And uh, I, I wanted to get uh, Brother I.O.'s thoughts on this. Now, I've been living abroad uh, for about five or six years. I'll make it very brief. And I was talking to one African elder there. It, it was about another issue, uh, but similar, but it got into a discussion about what's going on for us over here with the, the sexual assault on black people. And that issue was there was a situation where an elder, and I'll be very brief, he had uh, prostate cancer. And he was looking for a young lady, a virgin lady, to have intercourse with, with the belief that 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 will cure him of his disease. So then I asked one of the elders, I, you know, just to explore, and then we got into a conversation about what was going on in the state. And he told me that he thinks that a lot of this, this pedophilia that's going on is, is related to some type of sexual rituals where people are conducting on children and other people. So I just wanted to uh, get that out there and ask that to Brother Ayo in particular, if he's in his research, is, is, is that type of stuff coming enough that they're actually doing some type of ritual? I don't want to use the term magic, but if, from their context, I guess it would be magic, some type of magical sexual rituals mm -hmm. where they think they're going to get, I guess, younger or whatever, or is it just pure physical love? So... Brother Ayo, I just posed that question to you. All right, thanks for your question, brother. All, All right. right, those that don't know, uh, my title is Irritated Gene in the Southeast, uh, but some people, you know, they know me, call me Ayo, that's my name, I'm Rose, so maybe I know the brother from uh, some other place, but uh, definitely, uh, um, to, to answer this question, that's what we were talking about April 15th, and just for anybody else to call, please, my title is Irritated Gene, that's what I refer to you, I refer to you as. Um, the, 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 the lecture we'll be doing on April 15, 2017, uh, Third Marshall Center here in Washington, D.C. Actually, I'm going to deal with exactly what that brother's talking about. Because what came out in the WikiLeaks, uh, the, uh, you know, uh, Assange has a whole WikiLeaks where they put out information through the hacked emails of John Podesta. We're no longer speculating. There's no longer, are they involved in sick rituals with children? There's no longer... A little, um, uh, uh, a blurry little part of the video that you can't really see what's going on. We actually now have the type of information that will help us understand why those 33 black children were being kidnapped from Haiti to be brought back to the U.S. and what the purposes they were going to be used for. We also know some of the names of the individuals and the ranking. We're talking about somebody who's about to be president of the United States. So, to answer the question, it's no longer speculation do I think. We now have the proof that this is going on, and I'm going to share this information in a very, um, um, very definitive, certain manner to show what's going on. So that if anybody's seen any work that I've done, I don't do speculation. I've got everything up to prove. We're going to look at what has come out that is going on with the sexual insanity of the whites in high ranking, the not just whites, we say it is is governed and controlled by small hats and high power, but there's black people involved in it, there's, uh, there's blacks in our community, and we think of uh, supporting black liberation. I hope y'all listen to what I'm saying. There are people who we think are representing black liberation, or black power, or representing our community. We think they're fighting the beast, but they're actually out here defending pedophilia, promoting homosexuality, and they're actually working with these same individuals who are doing unthinkable things to children. We're going to show you better than I can tell you. So I want you to consider that we're actually going to Facebook Live that one. It's a free event, so if you're watching DC area, you want to come on out to it. But we're going to Facebook Live that one because I said I'm going to do this for free so everybody can see it. It's the most alarming situation in the world, and I wanted to say this on that. Brother, I want you to know how important what we're talking about here today is. I'm going to say this very definitively. What I'm going to break down on April 15th, it is inexcusable that there are no other black leaders that are talking about this. Event. And the reason, you know, I have to do it, I, mean, I uh, stopped lecture in 
in October. I pulled back because I got to do some other things. <clears throat> but once I put all the pieces together, I got a, I got a story from uh, Jamaica, from a sister who told me they were actually murdering sisters and taking their body parts out and selling them in Jamaica. Mm. And I kind of didn't want to believe it. You know, I believe somebody like that. I'm like, yeah. So I told the sister, what about you on our radio um, you know, station? I'm going to do one of the DJs, go straight back, cry radio. Uh, but now she said, hopefully you give us some evidence, some proof, you know what I mean? I wasn't prepared for what she said. If you go to warnhorizon.com website, uh, and I'm not telling anybody that wants to do it, but you can see the video for yourself. When you go to the website, when it's an explicit video, be careful and watch it at your own risk, but you'll see what they're doing to our women over in Jamaica. And mm-hmm. now, since that time, I'm talking to the women of the men now, and they're literally kidnapping people, cutting their bodies up, snatching body parts out. And what she told me now is that the government, now that the people that make us the videos, the government has told the people, stop telling this myth about organ trafficking going on here. And if we find out that you WhatsApp or text a video outside of this country saying organ trafficking, we're going to arrest you. Wow. So, yeah. That's so, crazy. So the fact that no black leaders are talking about what I'm going to talk about on April 15th, I want to say this so people don't hear this. It tells you that we're in a crisis situation and we need a draining of the swamp. The black leadership has been completely corrupted. There's no way you can be relevant and be a black leader and not be talking about the pedophilia, the homophilia, the child sex trafficking, and the organ trafficking in the black community right now because there's nothing more dangerous to survive the African people in the 21st century than those two things to merge. Wow. So it's, um, it's getting serious out here. So you're telling me that uh, on April 15th, where do people have to go that want to watch this? You said it's going to be on Facebook Live. Where else can they go? Or what do, what do they have to do to get be a part of it or look at it? Okay, you can, uh, if you go to uh, Facebook and uh, click Irritated Genius Southeast and like the page, on that day we're going to uh, live stream it on uh, Irritated Genius Southeast page uh, on Facebook. Also, if you want to come out to it, it's going to start at 4 p.m. It's a free event. I'm financing this my own self, something that our people should be paying for because this message is something that we need more than anything, but I'm paying for it out of my pocket to make it free for our people. <clears throat> it's at 1816 12th Street Northwest at the 3rd of Marshall Center. It's a beautiful uh, uh, environment uh, in a building uh, um, managed by brothers and sisters that allow everybody in the community to have something that they want to say to come out and rent that space, a great space, comfortable. Come on out. You're going to get, I'm going to have strong security, so you don't have to be concerned about that. And it's going to be, I'm promising people, it's as important. What I'm going to share on April 15th is as important as if you and I were able to walk around the African continent in the 1400s and say, hey, these ships are about to come and try to enslave our people. Let me show you what they're going to do to us. Mm. That's how important this discussion is. Wow. April 15th, tax day. And that's 4 p.m. Eastern. Uh, we'll uh, we'll definitely try to get it. and I'll try to get on there and check it out as well and uh, we're going to have to do something about this because this is a sad case you know if they can tell I you can okay. I ask you a question sure would you be able to take it while we're live Facebooking it and take it and then also show it on your thing as well most definitely I'll put it up on Periscope Facebook Live YouTube Live and ChrisMonroeSTL.com slash live so we'll put it out at the same exact time uh, and you know multi-stream it so it can be out and everybody can see it right as it happens we like to bring the information that's what we want to do because we have been you know lied to with the mainstream or so-called mainstream media so our black media has to step up and put the information out as it is and that's exactly what we're here and what we're here to do so uh, most definitely. So that's gonna be on April fifteenth, four o'clock Eastern. That's on Tax Day, and it's called Pizza Gate, or that's that's the name of it. What'd you call it? It's Pizza Gate, the new slave trade. The new slave trade. Damn, they locking us back up in shackles. We in trouble, y'all. But we are gonna break it down for you here. Coming up in about what three weeks. So I'm gonna take some of these more some more of these phone calls here. The numbers five one six four one eight five five six five five one six four one eight five five six five. All right, we got a uh, 985 area code. You're on the Chris Monroe Show. Who is this? Hey, how you doing, Chris? Good. Who's this? Uh, no. Can you hear me? Yeah, who is this? This is N.O. N.O. Saint. How oh, N.O. Saint. What's going on, uh, Stephen? You got a question for the irritated genie. Yeah, I, I got well, to throw a couple of questions. I'm going to get off and listen. One is, how does he choose which devil's information he believes? He talks about Assange and WikiLeaks a lot. So how does he decipher that that's just not uh, another devil that's deceiving him? And uh, the second thing is, how does he feel about Asians and Latinos as well? Because he didn't mention those two. I, I know he says he hates all other races, so, I, I, so I'm just curious about those two things. I'll hang up and listen. 
right, thanks for your comment. All right. All right, so let me start with the age of the Latino. What was his first question was, uh, uh, how do I decide who I listen to? Okay, who I listen to? All right, so let me say this. Uh, as an individual, in terms of a historical issue with Native Americans, I don't have a historical issue with Native Americans. I think we had a relatively good relationship with Native Americans prior to the Europeans interceding in that and creating a clash between the two groups, having us being used to exterminate them and having them participate in the slave trade, and they didn't send any votes over there to get us in. So they got us both involved in the game. We weren't involved in each other prior to the European getting their seats. I don't have a problem with the, the, the Native Americans in that sense. In the modern context, the Latinos, when I was growing up, I was very favorable towards Latinos. You know, we call them amigos, they were cool. In the modern context, because there are a lot of different factors that are leading, but it's becoming a highly competitive environment, and I'm, me personally, I've begun to see the quote-unquote Latinos or Hispanics, as you would call them, taking a different attitude towards African people. A more disrespectful, uh, almost a, a, a white type of mentality or a disdain or a disrespect or a walkover mentality for our people. So as an African, anybody, that, even another African that, that was born in Africa, anybody that starts to step on the progress of African people, I'm going to treat them like they acted that moment. But it's not a hard, set in stone, historical hatred or resentment for Latinos. As it relates to Asians, uh, we have Asians right now um, in, when I say Asians, you know, Asians, you got the Indians from India, you got the Chinese, so I'm just talking about Asiatics in general. You have those that are in West Papua right now, the Indonesians who are Asians. Um, they're over there exterminating our people there. How do I feel about them? They should be exterminated and put out in their Um, How do I feel about the Chinese that are going to African exploiting? I don't like that exploitation. Those Chinese should be put out, the ones that are exploiting. Um, and, and any group of Asians that come with any hostility towards African people should be dealt with as enemy combatants. As it relates to the Euros and the Arabs, I don't care what they do. They have a historical precedent of being enemies and undermining African people at all times under all circumstances that are relevant in today's time, uh, in today's context, and it's just an enemy race. That's just what it is. Now, when you ask me, um, how do I decide who I listen to? Well, I listen to information. I investigate. Again, I don't know who was listening before. I one of the two world experts in uh, the the homophile crisis on African people. But in addition to that. I'm one of the premier scholars and, and, and social scientists dealing with African survival in the 21st century. So what that means is I'm not just subject to listen to just African information. I got to listen to information from every place that it comes from. And the way I make the decision is I look, I verify, and I see what's 